Hi everybody, so today we're doing a statics problem. We have this beam with ends A and B. At end A, we have a rope pulling the beam at an angle of 30 degrees. And then we have a fixed support over here at point B. So what the problem wants us to do is to draw the free body diagram of the beam. And then determine the tension in the rope and the reaction forces at point B. So in order to do part B, we're actually going to need to do part A first, and that's kind of the good first step in any statics problem to draw the free body diagram first, so that's what we're going to do. So I have our beam here. Um, since B is a fixed support, we have reactions in both the X and the Y direction, so I'll draw them here. I'll label them BY and BX. And then I can move on to this point load here. So I'll draw that like this because we're going to break that up into components. That makes it easier to sum our forces in the x and the y direction. So we have our force components going this way. And then for the tension, we can do kind of the same thing. Our tension is pointing outwards, so we have a component going up and then one to the left. So we'll start. I'll call this T, and then we have an angle here. And so the sign of this angle is going to be this force that's going in that horizontal direction. So I'll call this T sine 30 because 30 degrees is the angle. And by default, that makes the other one T cosine 30. I can do the same thing here. This is also an angle of 30 degrees. So the component directly across from it will be the sine. And so I'll call this P just to make it easier to write. And so P is equal to 600 pounds. So this will be P sine 30. And then this one becomes P cosine 30. So with any statics problem, after we draw our free body diagram, we want to sum our forces and set them equal to zero. So because we've broken down this into components, we can take the sum of our forces in the x direction, in the y direction, and also our moments. So we'll have three equations, and that will allow us to solve for three unknowns, bx, by, t. So the first thing we're going to do is sum our forces in the x direction. And so we have this little axis here, so I'm just going to draw it out. We'll have these directions be positive. It's just for convention's sake, it doesn't really make a difference. So we'll set that equal to zero. So our bx reaction force here is positive. So we have bx minus this force here, t sine 30, because that's going in the opposite direction of bx. And then same thing with this force here. And we'll set that equal to zero. Now it's time to sum up our forces in the y direction as well. So what we can do is we can start with our reaction force. So by is going up, so that'll be positive. T cos 30 is also going up, so that'll also be positive. And then P cos 30 is going down, so that will be negative. And that's equal to zero. And then lastly, we'll want to take our moments. So um, I'll choose to take our moments about point B. You can take it about anywhere, but you want to be smart with it for convenience sake. So I'll just choose point B. And so the moment is defined as force times distance. So because the distance is zero at point B, none of the reaction forces contribute to the moment. And then P sine 30 and T sine 30 are actually acting along the axis of the beam. So those don't contribute to our moment at all either. So all we're left with is the vertical components of the tension and the applied load. So what we can do here is we can just pick any direction to be positive. So we'll say that moments going this way about point B will be positive. And so we have our P cosine 30, which is our value of the force. And then we also want our distance away from point B. So I should have drawn those out earlier. but that will be a distance of 9 away from point B. And then we'll go to this other component here, T cosine 30. T cosine 30 is going up in the other direction relative to B, so we'll throw the opposite sign on there, so that'll be negative. T cosine 30, so that's the value of the force, and we also want to add the distance. That will be 5 plus 9, and so we'll multiply that by 14, and that's equal to 0. So as we can see here, we have different um, equations. We have three of them. So for every unknown, you want one equation. So we have three unknowns and three equations. And so the easiest one to solve is going to be this last one here, because we only have one unknown, which is the value of t. So we can say that 14t cos 30 is equal to 9 
times 600, so I'll substitute in the value for p here, cosine 30, and so 14t is equal to 5400, and so we can divide by 14, and then we get that t is equal to 368 pounds, and then we can plug that value in for this other two equations up here, and then we get that bx is equal to 493 pounds, and that by is equal to 186 pounds. So there you go. Again, we draw our free body diagram, sum of forces in x, y, and the moments, and then we're able to solve that system of equations to get the values of the tension and the reaction in the end.